I'm G and I'm in Bruce B right now. I use AfriSell 4G because it has the fastest speed and the widest coverage. Yeah. I'm good. Senyai, thank you so much for granting us this interview. You at recently attended the donor conference in Brussels. Who did you represent and what was your role? Thank you. Um, um, I, I represented the private sector um, and in my capacity as the MD CEO of Tap Africa Global. And there was a business forum and I was one of the, one of the panelists on the forum on, on infrastructure. Okay, uh, can you tell us what did you discuss in that business forum? Well, there were, in the business forums we had about four um, uh, um, uh, themes that were discussed. Um, uh, there was one on, on, on energy, um, uh, there was one on, on infrastructure, um, there was one on tourism, there was also on agriculture. Okay. So um, um, uh, generally, uh, you had presentations done by, the, by, by government ministers mm -hmm. or, or permanent secretaries for each of them. And then you had um, uh, members of the private sector, out of which infrastructure I represented. Mm -hmm. um, um, tourism was there, um, um, doing business. Um, then, um, our role really was to sell the Gambia, I mean, share our experience. As an entrepreneur who has been in business for, for 28 years in this country, um, they wanted to hear you know, my experience in terms of what I have done here, what I have been success, successful in doing, and what challenges we had, to see how we can anchor best in the new National Development Plan. We have seen your success, so what has been your challenge as an entrepreneur? Well, there are many, there are many, um, uh, many challenges. Um, um, uh, finance, like every entrepreneur will tell you, uh, there's a challenge in raising finance, uh, generally for entrepreneurs. And um, in the Gambia, I think here, um, uh, our challenge is mainly um, uh, human resources. I mean, I don't think we have um, um, adequate um, uh, qualified capital, human capital, to execute some of the works that we do here in the Gambia. So what do you think is the way for to have that capital, human capital in place? Well, one is to, to, to train, to train the, the youth. We need to train them and, and motivate them and to work also on a change of attitude. Because what we do, it's, it's mainly technical. And generally, I mean, the youth of today don't want to get their hands dirty. Um, uh, they don't want to go into any vocational training and, um, and um, uh, be qualified to do the sort of works that we do. So in order to, to, um, um, to um, uh, change this and also to be able to get labor to do this, we need to train them, motivate them, and also get, get, ask them to change their attitude. Moving on, recently you have been appointed into the National Business Council. What is it about and what is your role there? Well, the National Business Council, um, uh, it's um, a membership of five cabinet ministers. And, um, um, and eight um, uh, business um, operators in the Gambia. And um, it's chaired by the president. And um, it has been formulated so that we foster dialogue between the private sector and government at that level, at the level of cabinet. So we look at government policies um, and also we, we, we monitor in, and evaluate certain projects. Um, um, especially for the, for the National Development Plan. Uh, as you know, um, um, uh, government has launched the National Development Plan. And um, the, na the, the National Business Council you know, has got a big role to play in, in, in projects like this at the policy level. Okay, at the donor conference, the European Union has pledged um, $1.7 billion for the Gambia. So, can you break down this thing to us? What is the government's role? Well, if you talk about the, the National Development Plan, I mean, uh, let, me, let, me, let me try and tell you what I think in my own interpretation is all about. Um, uh, it's in four different categories. I mean, this is a plan that the new government has put in place to implement for socioeconomic development and growth. And it is from 2018 to 2021. It's about three to, to four years. So um, it's in, they try to address four categories. Uh, one is um, governance. Um, the, so the other one is um, human capital. Um, the third one is fisheries and agriculture. And then the fourth one is um, infrastructure and energy. And the budget for this is about $2.4 billion. 
and uh, they went to, to Brussels um, uh, to raise the money. And um, they sort of, I mean, they were short about 1.45 billion euros, which is about 1.7 billion dollars. Unfortunately, it was it was pledged. It was pledged by the, the donor community, okay. both multilateral mm -hmm. and, and and some of the bilateral agencies. So um, um, on the on the on the um, um, uh, NDP and the donors conference, I mean, I think um, one good thing is that it was very well prepared. It was well documented, well prepared. That we must compliment government, mm -hmm. you know, for doing so. And then um, um, the conference was very well organized, very well attended. All the donor agencies attended, uh, members of the private sector, uh, members of civil society. Uh, now the pledge has been done. I mean, I think there are few things that we need to do, about three or four different things. At my personally, what I think that needs to be done. What are those three things? You think? Well, if I elaborate, I mean, I, I think now that the pledge has been done, the next thing is to make sure that those pledges are, uh, become a reality. Right. So the government needs to put in place the mechanism to make sure that swiftly these pledges you know, are a reality. I mean, the money is seen here. Um, and also the third thing is after the pledges have been realized is um, uh, the implementation of the projects. The, the project, as I said, is in four different categories, but I would like to probably go into detail in my own area. And my area is in infrastructure. Right. Infrastructure alone, um, uh, it's going to take, between infrastructure and energy, and probably ICT, close to $1 billion. So infrastructure, I think, alone is going to take about maybe between 500, um, about $500 million. And um, uh, they need to make sure that they move swiftly, because executing infrastructure projects take quite a lot of time. You will need to have consultants who will come in place, and then you have to have contractors who will come to come in place, um, and also executing the projects themselves, because um, the projects are mainly roads, you know, and um, uh, constructing roads will take quite a lot of time. And even going further into, into detail, um, the roads, for example, um, um, in, the, um, in, the, in, the, in the Banjul, the greater, the greater Banjul area, I mean, I think they were, they're going to build about close to about 500 and something kilometers of, of road, you know, and then um, the rural, rural roads also are, go, are going to be cons constructed. So it's quite a lot of work. So government now needs to put in place, you know, the structure so that this exe um, the execution will be swift and done properly. Like you said, most of the time the pledge, they will make pledges, but it will end up in the air. So apart from the government, who also should be able to help the government to swiftly make sure that they get what these people pledge? Well, most of these pledges come through to government, and government should try and address its weaknesses. Okay. And, and, and there are weaknesses at the national level. And the weaknesses are, obviously, human resources capacity, both at the public, that is government, and even in the private sector. So I think at the national level, we need to reach out to the Gambian diaspora. I personally think that there are quite a number of qualified Gambians who today can assist in our, in our challenges of human resources. So um, um, that's what I would urge a government and the implementing body, that we need to look out to qualified Gambians, you know, who are in the diaspora, and find them to come and join hands in implementing these projects. Okay, recently we have seen, you started a new venture with the Dalaba. Can you elaborate on that too as well? Well, Dalaba, it's um, a 370 um, um, housing units um, uh, on the Sukuta Jabang Road. Okay. This is part of our very big vision that we have for housing. Again, as you know, probably uh, we operate um, uh, in Africa, mm -hmm. you know, registered in eight African countries. And we have a vision to deliver one million homes over the next 20 years. Yes. In the Gambia, we, we are trying to deliver 10,000 units in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So every year, we would like to build 1,000 units. So this year, this is the first estate we have launched of 370. So we are short of another 630 um, um, uh, units, which we will launch very soon. And these are affordable houses. Uh, we are selling both um, um, sites and services and developed units. 
What we have done on this project, um, um, we have also been able to convince a second bank to come on board to issue our mortgages. At first, we started with um, GT Bank. They were the ones who were doing Tanji. Today, Echo Bank is also on board, and we are negotiating with a third bank so that you know people buyers will be able to to access mortgages and therefore you know uh, be able to buy our houses so we have started on um, on site um, uh, and this is for all the gambians who ever can afford it it's what i will call it's more for middle income and then um, we're working on one that will really be for the low low income so how about like you said affordability but the complaint among many people is that there are houses but that are expensive. So how long will those people, low-income earners, wait for them to have a house? Well, I mean, I, I also have seen that complaint, but, but the thing is, I mean, one thing that you need to realize about housing, that housing is not cheap. And um, uh, in the Gambia, I think um, the taxes on, on developing houses are quite high because all the building materials that we use, you know, attract a 15% VAT. And, and then also, I mean, uh, taxes, corporate taxes are quite high. Um, apart from that, all the materials are imported into the country. You know, there's, 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 there's about probably over 90% of materials being used in construction are imported. And all these attract, you know, very high taxes. They are very expensive. But all the same, we're doing everything possible to work on alternatives to make the houses as cheap as possible. Um, when we first started some few years back, I mean, uh, what we used to sell, it was much more expensive than today. Today, we have been able to lower houses and also afford mortgages. Um, generally, anywhere you go in the world, people will always complain about houses. I mean, there are some people that cannot afford to buy a house, no matter how, how cheap it is. But for us, we are committed to try to make it as cheap as possible so that you know, most of the population can, can afford it. How much money are we talking about for a single house in this Dalaba project? The Dalaba, um, we're doing sites and services. You can buy at about $500,000 for sites and services. And, and that's not all paid cash. I mean, if you qualify for a mortgage, the bank, you have to pay 40% down. And then the rest is spread over, over, over 10 years. And, and then, you know, from 500000 it goes up, depending on what you want. When you talk about size and services, what do you mean? Meaning that um, all the service that you need on the, on the site, you will have it. We will do all the roads. And for us, we are raising the bar. All our roads on our estate are all, all being, being bituminized, meaning with tar. Then we, we bring in water, we bring in electricity. Mm -hmm. And this time, we are also bringing in um, um, street lights. It's a gated community. We also plant trees in all our estates. Um, on this estate here, Dalaba, we're going to have 1,500 fruit trees. So there's value in the estate. So when you put, once you put all these things together, I mean, it raises the price. But again, we're trying to give quality and avoid developing, developing um, shanties. Shanty towns. Finally, what will be your final message? Well, my final message is still on the, on the, on the NDP, okay. which is the hottest yes. today. I, I personally think that um, um, there is enough money coming into this country for everybody to benefit. Right. And um, I, would, I would just urge that every Gambian, both in the Gambia and abroad, mm -hmm. should put hands together and be positive on how you engage in making this NDP a reality. I think in the history of this country, we haven't seen this amount of money pledged. Yeah. And if it is done rightly, it will be invest, invested into the country. And once it's invested, everybody, one way or the other, you will benefit. Again, this is only donor, I mean, um, money is coming through government. And once all these projects are done, remember it will also facilitate foreign direct investment and even local investment. Because the amount of roads that's going to be put into the greater Banjul area will open up a lot of areas. So hotels will be built, more houses will be built, um, uh, factories will be built. You know, um, uh, for example, if you look at energy, yeah. um, I can tell you the amount uh, that they are looking at about $487 million to pump into electricity. Everybody knows the challenges that we're going through with electricity. But once this is done, then it brings in a lot of confidence. People will now come here to do business. We expect that the cost of energy will go down. 
you know, and it will only bring prosperity to this country. Mm -hmm. So I urge government who is in the steering wheel to um, uh, be open and um, uh, make it all inclusive, you know, so it includes everybody, whether you are here or not, as long as you are Gambian, um, we should encourage them to be part of it. We should try and encourage a lot of local content. A local content because projects like this will be so huge that it will attract a lot of foreign companies. When they come in where Gambians cannot do it, they should also have some local content, meaning um, including the Gambians. And by doing so, they should also transfer skills. So this is one thing that needs to be done. So jobs will be created and then, you know, we will see growth in this economy. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank you. I'm going to show you why I choose Africell. This is my phone. It has a real 4G SIM card from Africell. And here's the same exact phone with another 4G SIM card from a different network. Let's do a speed test. Wow, I'm getting full coverage with my Africell that reads 80.4 Mbps and this one is getting like 13.65. This is proof that Africell by far has the fastest speed and the widest coverage.